Welcome to the Department of Dental Informatics presentation of adding a lab order in Axiom. As with many features in Axiom, there are multiple ways to go about this process. A lab order can be added either through the patient's EHR or through your personal planner. Both methods yield the same results, so today we will create the lab order through the EHR. Before a lab order can be created, there has to be a treatment planned on the patient's chart. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will plan a bridge, including the pontic, retainers, and the bridge drawbar. To get started, we will add the pontic by clicking the pontic code, the tooth where we want it, and clicking on the plan button. Now we will do the same process for the retainers, selecting the procedure code, both teeth, and clicking plan. When you plan a procedure that has an associated lab code, this window will pop up, which will give you the option to tether the appropriate lab code to the planned procedure. Note that this will not automatically initiate the lab order process. Really, the only time you should click close instead of add is when you're absolutely certain there won't be a lab needed. Finally, we will draw our bridge bar by selecting the code, the teeth, two and four, and planning. After the procedures have been planned and put in process, we can now navigate to the labs tab to begin creating our order. First, click on the folder with the green plus to open the add lab order window, and click on the ellipsis to the right of the treatment field. Double click on the procedure for which you would like to order a lab, and immediately below the treatment field, you will notice that the lab procedure field has auto-populated with the appropriate lab code. With the treatment and lab procedure fields complete, click OK and you'll be brought to the lab order details page. The first thing you will do here is choose your discipline. Pre-doc students will always enter their discipline as pre-doc unless they're working in implantology, in which case you'll choose implantology. If you're a provider working out of a different practice, choose the appropriate practice. Next, make sure your name is listed as the provider. If your name does not auto-populate, you can just click the ellipsis and search. Finally, verify the selected lab is correct. In the internal note and details fields, you can enter whatever you want as those fields will be replaced with a note later. However, you have to have something in the fields in order to add the form, so it doesn't really matter what you put in. Click the green plus to add the record. You'll notice that the internal note and details fields have changed to see lab form. At this point, if you have any supplements to add, you can add them by clicking on the supplements ellipsis. This is a pretty straightforward process. Make a selection, click the chevron pointing towards the box on the right, and repeat. To remove an entry from the selected supplements box, it's the same process in reverse. Click the supplement you want to remove, and then the chevron pointing towards the box on the left. Now you can fill out the lab order by clicking on the paper and pencil and choosing OK. This brings us to the lab order EPR form, which we will now fill out. Once you've finished filling out the form, faculty can approve it if they are available, or you can close the lab order details window and faculty can approve it later. As mentioned, faculty can approve at a later date if they are unavailable. So let's see what that looks like. We are now logged in as faculty and will search for the lab to be approved. With Mr. Munchausen selected, note that the box where his chart number is listed is teal. Click the chart number, the lab orders button, Select the lab to be approved, and click on the paper and pencil to open the form. Here, faculty can open the signature window and sign the form. After typing and signing your name, click OK. Close the EPR form. Double-click on the lab order, 
and click Approve in the lower right. The form is now approved by faculty and can be sent to the billing office for verification. Now logged back in as a student and with faculty approval, the lab order can be sent to the billing office for final approval. To do this, go to the Forms tab in EHR. Expand the OUCOD lab order form, select the lab form, and click on the Add Action icon. Clicking the Running Man will bring up a dialog box where you can include an optional note. Pending approval is sufficient, and select the Business Office Message Group. It is important to message the group and not an individual user in order to ensure the quickest response. Set the status to Notify. Note that if you send the lab order to the billing office before having faculty sign and approve the form, it will be rejected and you will have wasted your time. You can now check the status of the form by opening the Forms tab in EHR and selecting OUCOD lab order form from the list on the right. When the billing office approves the form, the status will change from pending to approved. Each lab order is comprised of an initial lab submission, which may be followed by resubmissions to correct any errors that may arise in the process. The following are easily avoidable mistakes, which often occur when resubmitting a lab order. These will become more clear in the following section, so just for now, familiarize yourself with the verbiage. First, providers enter a new lab order when they should be adding a new lab item within the existing lab order. The second easily avoidable mistake is that providers modify a lab prescription instead of adding a new prescription. Finally, each resubmission to the lab requires a unique lab item number and a unique lab prescription form. The distinctions between lab item versus lab order and modify versus adding prescriptions will become more clear in the following section. There are many different reasons why you may be required to resubmit a lab order, and the following are the steps required to do so. First, in the Labs tab, open the original lab order that you want to resubmit. In the Lab Order Details window, click the folder with the green plus to add a new lab item. With this and each subsequent resubmission, a similar lab item warning will appear, alerting you that a similar lab order item already exists and whether or not you want to continue. Click Yes and you'll see a new lab item appear in the list at the bottom of the Lab Order Details window. With the new lab item highlighted, click on the pencil and paper EPR icon. This is where mistakes are often made. As you can see, this prescription can be edited. It is important that you never edit an improved prescription. Instead, click on the green plus to add a new prescription form. When you see the Add Form dialog window, just click OK through to the new prescription form. You'll have to fill out the form from scratch since none of the information is retained from the original. You can add the design diagram to the prescription by clicking on the Tooth Design field or the removable case design field and drawing anywhere on the image and clicking OK. This will print out the image with the rest of the script. Next, you'll need a signature from approving faculty. With faculty approval, you can click on the Action Running Man icon. You'll use this to notify the business office of the new lab script by clicking on the ellipsis next to the message group and double clicking on Business Office. Change the status to Notify and click OK. Finally, as the prescriptions and resubmissions accrue, there will come a time when you will likely want to toggle between the forms. In order to do this, you can click on the Select tab icon in the EPR window, and a new window will open showing all the prescriptions associated with the order. From here, you can just double click on the form that you want to view. And that is how you resubmit a lab form in Axiom. This process is a bit of a learning curve, so if you have further questions, we have a flowchart on the correct steps as a PDF on the College of Dentistry Extranet, or you can stop by the Department of Dental Informatics in room 361 in the College of Dentistry, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching.